Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here, kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And I have a feeling the reason why I'm already tripping on my lips so early in the game is because I got such an off-the-chain awesome special guest that I'm just so jacked and stacked, I can hardly handle myself. And after you get into this podcast and you tune in for a few moments, you'll understand why. Because I am with the one, the only, James Petrick, And he's going to be sharing his story on how he tripled, not doubled, but tripled his purchase volume in just two months. Yeah, you heard me right. Just two months without making a single cold call. So I know none of you want any more purchase business. I know none of you want to figure out how to do that in spite of crazy low inventory and a raising, rising interest rate environment. None of that would be even remotely close to being relevant to you guys. But hypothetically speaking, if it was, I have a feeling that you might wanna tune in just to kind of get your handles on the kind of wicked effective marketing and the kind of wicked effective path to prosper that would create that kind of unprecedented result. Obviously, that doesn't happen by accident. It happens by design. So James, thanks for hanging with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Doran. Yeah, brother. It's uh, it's really cool to, to be on this live podcast because it feels like it was just yesterday. We were talking on the phone and you were kind of hemming and hawing around. Should I do this? You've been thinking about it for like a, literally a year. We got on a on a call. <laughs> you kind of thought about it and we're just sitting on the fence for a year, just spinning your wheels, struggling for a long time. And you finally just decided, OK, enough is enough. No more. I've had it. You talk to your wife. She's like, yeah, I'm ready for you to start making some hero money. And here we are like just a few months later and you've literally just gone stratospheric. It's just incredible to see how far you've come in such a short period of time. So why don't we rewind the tape? Why don't we just kick things off first and foremost with a little background? You know, uh, obviously your name is James Petrick. I introduced you, but let's give a little bit of the backstory. Where are you from? Where do you reside? How long you been in the mortgage business? And what inspired you to get in the business to begin with? Let's start there. Yeah, so uh, I'm actually from a bit of all over. I am uh, in, grew up as an Air Force brat, so I was actually born at the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, lived at a few different bases. So uh, you definitely learn the valuable skill of being the new kid, um, which comes in very handy with networking, work with new clients. So uh, kind of tailored fit this industry very well. Um, and before I got into the industry, I was actually working for Apple as a global uh <clears throat> guest uh, store trainer. So the new hires and new managers, we would do their onboarding and their training and their sales training. And then when new products uh, or software came out, we'd be some of the first people in the retail stores to see it and then train the rest of the staff on it. Mm -hmm. Um, So it already had like a really strong background and a lot of really extensive training from Apple of how to create that lifelong client. Um, And, you know, Making a sale in an Apple retail store is certainly a much smaller purchase compared to a home, but a lot of those principles um, certainly ring true. Um, so just kind of looking for a bit of a change, you know, not working the 80 hour work weeks and kind of trading, uh, traveling all the time. Um, so I actually met my now boss at a men's retreat from church, and I remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, this is going to be so boring. I room with my dad and two old guys. And one of those old guys was my boss. And we ended up staying up till like five in the morning, just talking, sharing stories about life. And at the end of it, he's like, you should come work for me. And I'm like, well, what do you do? And he's like, I'm a mortgage broker. And I'm like, what is that? So I kind of went and shouted him for a little bit. And he kind of let me see what he did day to day, how he interacted with clients uh, as a broker, having a lot of different options to fit pretty much any loan scenario that someone's going to need. Um, and really just going by, hey, you know, we're going to get you the best program, the best rate, the best closing costs, um, and really present a lot of different options and let people make the decisions for themselves. That was a big part of how I train people to create lifelong clients at Apple. So it really felt like a good move. Um, certain little bit scary going from getting a paycheck every, uh, you know, every week to you don't get paid if you don't close. Right. Um, I also had the luxury of kind of starting as a processor for the company. So got to see a lot of the stuff on the back end, um, you know, filling out the 1003s, communication between underwriters, um, the listing agent, the buyer's agent, uh, kind of all parties involved. So I got to see a lot of different parts of the transaction um, 
on the back end. So it really kind of helped me get engrossed and ingrained in kind of what that process looked like. So when I actually went and got licensed, um, a lot of the challenging stuff and looking at a new loan application like an underwriter was kind of second nature. So I got to do what I do best, which is selling myself and selling my services. Very cool. So we got a little bit of your origin story. How long have you been in the business? Uh, four years uh, since I've been licensed. Four years. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you've learned a ton since then. And uh, there's a big difference between surviving in this business and thriving in this business as you're well yes, acquainted. And so tell us about the survival season, because obviously you've been in survival mode in this business longer than the thrival mode. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, hindsight being 2020, you probably wish we we talked a lot earlier and you said, screw it, let's do it a lot earlier. But hey, nothing nothing wrong with being in the dark room with the lights off for a while to have a heightened appreciation for the glory of having the lights turned on. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, it's it's kind of challenging because, um, you know, the way that the industry is kind of set up is realtors, loan officers, they send a lot of those referrals back and forth. And that's really forged on relationship trust. Um, you know, how can you help that person grow their business? How can they help you grow yours? So when you're first kind of starting out, I mean, most realtors that are producing a lot, they already have those relationships really solidified with um, either a local bank or a broker. So kind of finding how you break in with those, uh, that was just a really challenging environment. And, um, you know, my boss had a lot of great advice, but also when my boss kind of broke into this industry, uh, there wasn't some of the technology, um, there wasn't some of the same networking opportunities, um, some of the marketing through Facebook or social media, like those things just didn't exist. Um, so a lot of the advice I had gotten um, was absolutely great advice, but um, not necessarily taking advantage of all of the different avenues available. Um, so from there, um, joined a few networking groups, uh, and that kind of became my lifeblood. Um, and it was also huge because you have a lot of different services you can refer out to your clients outside of mortgages. Um, so that was really kind of like my first big push in the networking. Um, but it really did feel like, you know, you're going out and like you're hunting every single day. Um, great thing about hunting is it's fun, but the bad thing about it is you don't necessarily control if there's prey out there. Uh, someone or something else spooks it. So that's kind of what it felt like prior to, you know, taking advantage of the your guys' system. And, you know, once I kind of got involved with it, so much of it is done for me at the stuff I can certainly figure out but I'm not necessarily great at. So I kind of leave a lot of the, the marketing behind the scenes stuff, the, the organizational pieces, the people that are really skilled and gifted at it to take a lot of stuff off of my plate. Um, and it's drastically increased my volume, but it's freed up my time to be able to handle it as well. Because doing it how I was before, if I had the same volume right now, I'd be doing so much more on the back end. I don't know if I could honestly sustain it and give the level of service that, you know, my clients expect and that I love to provide for them um, while also going out and, you know, hunting my own food, so to speak. Yeah. So you've had to build some muscle uh, and that's the cool thing about it, right? You don't go from being a skinny Jimmy at the gym on day one and, and be Arnold Schwarzenegger on day two. You know, that's not how it works. You got to put in the, the clanging and banging and put in the work a lot of strain and pain before you get the gain, so to speak. But let's let's rewind the tape and go back because you know it had been probably around three years you've been in uh, living in Struggle City before you came to us on Planet Prosper. And I know it's probably feels like another lifetime ago, but I want to kind of get you reacquainted and reconnected to what it was like on a day to day basis in the in the dark night of the soul, so to speak, when there's too much month at the end of the money when. You know, you're putting all this time, energy and effort with fruitless toil and you're just spinning your wheels. So bring us back to that place. You know, this is before mortgage marketing coach, before landing on Planet Prosper. You're doing the networking, you're chasing realtors. They're not giving the time of day. What was some of the most painful part, the most stressful, painful part about you know, living in that struggle on a day to day basis for you? Well, I think the the hardest part, I'm certainly blessed to have it at the time, was 
had a second job before and after office hours. So, you know, that was kind of what sustained a lot of living expenses and things like that. Um, but when you're dividing so much of your attention, you really can't focus and double down on what's important. What was important to me was my career as a mortgage broker. Right. So Straddle, straddling two horses now. Exactly. Um, so, you know, you're not a hundred percent in either, either one of those places. Um, and then, you know, with a lot of realtors, it, it kind of felt like, you know, it's kind of like the sellers in this market right now, they had all of the power in that relationship. So, you know, they're typically the ones that are talking to people first and then recommend what bank the, to go to talk to. Um, so it was really, hey, what you can provide for me? What can you do for me? Um, are you going to pay for a Zillow ad with me? Um, you know, what are what are all the things you're going to do for for me to think about sending business to you? Right. Um, so that was certainly uh, a little frustrating as well, too, because, you know, great at what I do. Um, had a lot of potential referral sources coming out to, to give it to people, certainly not at the level that I do now. Um, but it definitely kind of felt like you were the whipping boy. Um, mm -hmm. And that is never a good feeling, no matter what the scenario is. Um, but it was just a different mentality of how I thought about myself, how I thought about the business, how I thought that relationship between mortgage broker and realtor uh, should be working. Because I mean, at the end of the day, you have the cookie. People can't buy a house if they don't secure the financing. So uh, no way am I diminishing what realtors do. But at the same time, if someone can't get financing, unless they have a cash offer, they're not buying anything. Um, so that is such an integral part of that process. Um, and you know, bringing a, a renewed champion mindset, which is not what I had before, um, that's something that's contagious. You would track that out of different realtors. So, you know, the, the quality of realtors I work with now was certainly much different than the quality of realtors that I was working with at the time. Um, and then, you know, getting to choose, hey, what are the non-negotiable? These are the skill sets or personality traits or things that I want from realtors that I'm going to continually work with versus, well, these are the realtors that are sending me business. So this is kind of what I'm stuck with. Right. So that's the default setting because, of course, these realtors, they're not lying awake at three in the morning saying, I can't wait for another loan officer to leech loans from me. I can't wait for another loan officer to call me. You know, that's not exactly how it goes. So you don't exactly have an easy yes on the overture as a default setting, as you know. And anyone else who's been in the business for more than a day obviously know that, knows that to be true as well. So tell, tell us about, I mean, you're a husband, uh, you're wanting to be provider, you know, you have that driven personality, you want to be the best you can possibly be, be, you want to serve a lot of people. Tell us about the suck, having all these desires that you want to accomplish and yet spinning your wheels, banging your head against the wall, going nowhere, or at least kind of being in, in, in survival mode prison where you're kind of just doing enough just to kind of get by, but nothing really yeah. more, nothing really less. What for you were some of your biggest fears, your biggest concerns, your biggest stress points at that point? You know, where's, where's the next closing come from? Like, oh my gosh, what if something happens? What if an appraisal comes in low? What if someone walks out of that deal, you know, partway through? It was such a, a big fear um, within that time frame. Um, and then the other thing too, you know, I think the, the simplest way to put it is, you know, parable of the talents, right? Um, it kind of felt like the talent or things that I had wasn't really able to affect as many people as I could. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of my talents is building that relationship and, and that trust with clients and, and with realtors, but didn't really have an an avenue to get in front of them. So, you know, I kind of felt like I had those talents and was burying in the sand. That's not doing any good for me. That's not doing any good for the kingdom. It's not doing good, any good for the people that I could serve. So um, that was also very frustrating because it wasn't how I wanted to be conducting business. It wasn't uh, a consistent stream of provision for, you know, myself and my now family. Uh, so, you know, there's also a lot of fear, uncertainty, uh, stress, anxiety that comes along with that as well. Yeah. And, uh, and for us men, you know, there's a lot of self-esteem, self-respect, mojo, swagger factor we get from winning for the family and slaying dragons for the family. And when we're not, it's like, man, 
it's it's a real source of castration if you will to our mojo even if you know we have like you and i do uh, a faith in in our creator we know that god's got us there's still something about getting our butts kicked on the front lines that really sucks Mm-hmm. especially when we have a heart to serve and help people and we're kind of a secret agent, you know, we're the best secret around and no one's really taking advantage of what we can bring to the table. That's a special kind of suck as well. So you tried networking, you tried cold calling realtors. What else did you try with meager or anemic results before we talked? Um, you know, really trying to reach out to uh, past clients, um, I mean, cutting a piece out of a cake and sending it to a realtor's office and say, hey, I don't want all your business. I just want a piece of it. Um, <laughs> you know, different things like that. Um, right. And, you know, they certainly work to a certain extent, but it's not the lasting. This top producer is going to send you all of your business. Right. Um, it's not the partner level that i've experienced with a lot of my vip partners now where you know hey they come across someone i'm the first person they call um or you know before they even go start looking at houses let's get that pre-approval over um you know this is the time frame this is the info i need from them to get it back over to them in the most timely fashion so the communication between the realtor me and the and the borrower has kind of all been streamlined as well um and then kind of training each other what exactly do we need and when do we need it? Um, so, so much as that of that has changed um, as well. So, you know, kind of thinking back, like I can't imagine sending the cake to a realtor's office with a piece cut out and saying <laughs> something like that. I can't imagine calling and, you know, basically begging for a business. Now it's, hey, I have avenues to help you grow your business. Here's your goals. Here's your trigger points. I can help you alleviate that um, and really help them make that a connection to their business and how, what I can do to help them grow um, and kind of flip the script of leeching business off of them. Yes, they're going to send referrals my way, but I'm also helping them grow their business and um, gain some of their referrals and extend their pipeline as well. So a lot of those fears, anxiety, things that I dealt with, that's not something that the realtors I work with have to experience anymore either. Right. Yeah. So at that point, though, you didn't know now. So you're basically just walking around blind, wondering why you're bumping into things every day and getting bruised up. Right. Yeah. And so here you are. You're in Struggle City. You're getting banged up, bruised up on the front lines. How many deals were you doing at that point when you're in Struggle City? Uh, Maybe one. Right. Right. So maybe one deal, just enough to kind of get by, enough to kind of float the boat, but certainly not making free money. Kind of just like, uh, you know, you go to Vegas, they get you winning just enough to keep pulling the slots, right? Exactly. So just enough to kind of keep you there, but not enough to get you soaring and living your best life. So let's talk about kind of the inner sanctum of your soul, so to speak, that part of your motivation that had you have too much grit to quit that had you keep plodding on in spite of the challenges in spite of getting your your nuts kicked in with all the setbacks and disappointments and struggles um, that had you reaching out for help with us and saying screw it let's do it what was that you know that there's there's two sides of the coin right on one side it's your ambition and what you what's available to you on the other side of winning but there's also the consequence of losing so it could have been a combination of both the carrot and the stick, but usually it's a little bit more of the stick than it is the carrot for most of us, because we'll often do more to avoid pain than we will to gain pleasure. So what was it for you? So for me, it was, I wasn't able to do the business the way I wanted to. And, you know, I grew up playing sports. Hockey was certainly my sport. I know you're from Canada. I know you played, so I know it's something you appreciate as well. And, um, you know, I also played a position where there was one of us on the ice at a time. So um, there was a ton of competition. Um, There was a ton of pressure. And like, you are that person where if you see 60 shots and your team gets five and you lose two to one, it's still your fault. So there was such a high pressure, um, high reward to that job that I really, really, or to that position that I just loved and was drawn to. Um, And, you know, just one of the special people, when a puck comes at your head, you go into it instead of away from it. (laughs) Um, So I really hadn't found a way to kind of recapture or rekindle that within 
business. Um, and I really liked a lot of what I was able to bring to the table in mortgages and with sales I had with, with Apple and other jobs because there's not a ton of information that's necessarily cons very consumer facing for your average customers. Um, you know, some clients are certainly going to know more than others, um, but to really help people completely understand every aspect of their loan, what they're getting into, um, you know, what are some benefits to real estate investing? How can they get into that um, and really help them understand as well as getting them the right loan solution, the, the right rate, the right closing costs um, and making a difference there that I wanted that experience, that that pressure to being able to really make a difference um, for your team, so to speak. Um, and it just wasn't really happening with how I was doing the marketing or, or how I was trying to get business in before um so i kind of just hit that point where like hey you know what's what is the absolute worst that can happen okay i blow the money on the marketing it doesn't work and i'm still in the same position i am right now so there was so much more to gain than there was to lose for me if that makes sense and what was at stake for you that was the most weighty foreboding uh consequence of not making this work that had you you know, losing sleep or had you, you know, really feel like there's some, there's a lot at stake here. Kind of that love or draw for why I got into the industry for the first place. And then, you know, getting engaged, getting married, it's not just about me anymore, right? It's mm -hmm. having that, having, be, being able to provide for your wife, for your family, for, you know, your kids in the future, kind of setting up a lot of those different things just wasn't happening at, where I was before. So what I envisioned, those hopes, those dreams, the desires of my heart weren't going to happen unless something changed. So, yeah, I mean, it's amazing once you, once you get married and it's like, okay, now it's not just me. I can't just be a broke bachelor. It's time to step up my game, right? You know, that luxury of just coasting is no longer available. What were, you know, so you, you reached out to us, you booked a, a breakthrough call. We had a real talk conversation. We got real about where you're at now, where you want to be and the consequence of this problem persisting in your business. And, you know, you're on the precipice, if you will, or maybe a better metaphor would be a launching pad. You're on the launching pad to making a decision whether you're going to kick this problem in the teeth or whether you're just going to allow the problem to persist. And you put down a deposit and you basically were in like, I can't afford it mode. You're in, uh, I need to get resourceful mode. You're in the, you know, let me figure it out mode. And then like literally a whole year went by, I think somewhere in that range. Anyway, it was a long period of time. I think it was approximately about a year yep. that you were in, you're in what I would call pause purgatory, right? <laughs> same, same old rut, same old struggle. You had a little bit of, skin in the game to your dream. But at the end of the day, it was the same old problem. And obviously, you know, it, a deposit wasn't about to fix the problem. What had you decide to finally say, I mean, there's kind of, I want to hear about two sides of the story. One is what were some of your biggest fears you had when deciding to pull the trigger on the deposit, as well as actually officially enrolling and getting resourceful to enroll? to join us here on Planet Prosper. What were some of your biggest fears in terms of like the what ifs that had you stuck for a whole year? Um, and then what made you decide to just say, screw it, let's do it and dig deep and get resourceful and find a way to make it happen? Yeah, so I mean, there's there's always that fear of, you know, what if you fail? Um, and it's really funny to me because that's not really been my experience in pretty much other any, any other avenue of my life. Um, Yet when it came to to this, it was, you know, what if I fail? What if that initial investment isn't something that I can recoup and I'm already not making the money that I want to make um, or having the resources and the provision or, you know, am I, does that make me a failure if I then don't succeed after that investment? So I think those are certainly a lot of the the big fears and you know just kind of the the realization of with the investment okay how many loans do you actually need to close to recoup that and then two what is the benefit for 
a lot of the people that I'm already working and networking with and having it really kind of changed my perspective of like, hey, when I was on the ice and I was that champion and I was, you know, <laughs> seeing more rubber in the condom factory and my team was still winning, you know, how can I start doing that in mortgages? And this was the avenue that really just seemed to make a lot of sense. Um, and then how can I start being that goalie, being that really important player for the realtors that I'm working with? Um, so it gave me an option to really, truly bless and grow business of those around me. And then it, it just, there was just a change of my perspective because it's not a big amount of money because, you know, what, three closings, uh, right. three four closings, you know, that you can make that back up, but then that's just the surface level, you know, uh, you don't want to do it to break even. No, you want to do it to fully uh to much further and you know expand upon that even more um so to create a, a steady pipeline where all of those fears of where's my next loan coming from where's my next closing those are things that you don't really think about anymore um and it's putting in resources that are really good at what they do where I was trying to be that jack of all trades and master of none. Um, so it really allowed me to dial in my focus to why my boss wanted me to join him and start doing this because he saw that skill set. He saw that ability to, to sell and get in front of people and make them know, like, and trust me. But having the tools to kind of surround and accent that to let me focus on why I got into the industry um, and what really sets me apart that's what I saw this program being able to do for me and ultimately what it has. Yeah. And that's certainly a big reason why uh, smart, ambitious mortgage professionals like yourself uh, hire us and say, screw it, let's do it and make that bold, intelligent, strategic investment in themselves. Cause they realize while they have tons of capability and tons of talent and tons of potential potentials, overrated if you're showing up to the gunfight with a butter knife it's not going to go so well it's not just enough about potential you got to be equipped to win and obviously you realize that your forte at the time was not selling and marketing your forte was connecting with people and establishing relationships but if you couldn't you know get out of your own way you're gonna have skinny kids right and so that's like that's the rub is like you got to find a way to leverage someone's expertise so that you know you can delegate your weaknesses because where you are weak we are unique so you decided to do exactly that delegate your weaknesses get out of your own way you said screw it let's do it the rest is history you just mentioned a beautiful sentence that i will never ever get tired of hearing uh, till the day I die. And that is, I never have to worry where my next deal is going to come from. I mean, just to utter that from your words, I'm sure it just feels fan flipping tastic. Does it not? Yeah. And I mean, the, the other thing that was kind of an unaffected side effect as well, you know, that champion level attitude and how I'm interacting with my realtors, um, a lot of networking groups and other avenues that I'm still a part of, there's been such an increase in business and referrals coming from those people too, because they're seeing how much I'm helping that realtor grow their business. They're seeing how many more clients I'm having that I can refer for those services. So not only just the realtors that I'm working with, it's blessed a, another circle of people and then increased business coming from that as well. So it's kind of had a compound effect on a lot of different areas of my business, not just the marketing and the done for you services that you guys provided. It's really kind of elevated every aspect of my business. Um, and, you know, I'm certainly a, a little bit of a comic book nerd and, you know, Flash is certainly my favorite superhero. And program start to finish has really felt like it just kind of added that speed force just right into my business. That's awesome. And one of my favorite statements that I a hundred percent believe in to the core of my being is there's no movement without, without having movement within that movement without is always the effect of movement within. And so you've obviously had some huge growth within such that you're having that massive avalanche of awesome without and, uh, you know, it's, it feels amazing to be just a small part of helping you create that breakthrough. Let's uh, let's just go back just a tad real quick. 
and talk about the initial stage. Okay, so you you made that big, bold, intelligent, strategic investment in yourself, and you took the plunge. You landed yourself on Planet Prosper. Now it's time to roll up our sleeves, get to work. Now it's go time. It's time to get real. Massive action. Balls to the wall. Here we go. What are some of the things, maybe one, two, or three things that you heard me say or that you had me recommend to you in the initial stages of getting launched that you're like, really, Dorn? You really think that's going to work? Really? <laughs> what, what were some of those things? So it was really funny to me after going through the system how much of it was about was changing habits that may not necessarily have anything to do with mortgages. Um, you know, what is your daily routine? How do you start your day and how does that kind of set the tone for every and anything that you do throughout that day? Um, it's not that I didn't believe that it was true. And, you know, I'd certainly experienced that in hockey, you know, doing all of the other things that people aren't willing to do and having those better habits. That would that's what put you in a position to really shine when the opportunity arose. Um, but I hadn't had that click for me in a business sense. Um, so, you know, how do you choose to to start your day um, and going through the modules of the program and, you know, kind of making that end all be all like you're going to start, you're going to commit to doing that every day. And it kind of changed a lot of lifestyle habits that has impacted not just personally, but financially, business wise, spiritually. So there's there's been a lot of growth there that if someone would have told me that would have happened from a marketing program for my business, I would have been like, you're out of your mind. <laughs> um, so I think that was probably the biggest one. Um, and then the second one was actually spending, because you get trained in this industry conditions come up something goes wrong with a file realtors upset buyers upset sellers upset so there is such an aspect of putting out fires in this business but all right from this time to this time you're focusing on growing your business growing your future pipeline managing future clients um responding setting up meetings um meeting with your vip partners going over different things that you guys can do or try working on your business and then all right, once I've done that, once I'm happy or met whatever that goal I've set for myself is, then I'm going to work in my business. Now I'm going to go into putting out fires. Now I'm going to go into submitting conditions, um, you know, returning phone calls, that type of thing. So it was very much a shift that I was not expecting. Um, and if I hadn't seen it play out as I was doing it, I don't know if I would have believed that it worked. Um, because, well, then that's just going to frustrate like all the clients and realtors are working without. No, absolutely not. Because you're setting those expectations of, hey, I am going to, I'm focused and committed on growing my business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hey, I'm also doing all of these things. I'm working on my current clients. They're still getting everything done that they need to. Um, I still have time to work on me and work on my business as well as deal with those things um, and not kind of getting distracted by all of those things that pop up in this industry right yeah it's like the uh time management matrix that was made famous in uh, stephen covey's seven habits of highly effective people and most people get stuck in the urgent but not important and where we need to be and many people are also in the urgent and important and for obvious reasons, most people camp out there because it's important and urgent. The problem is you're never going to create a breakthrough and scale your business if you're constantly putting out fires with your fireman cap on in the urgent and important crisis management mode. We have to shift into the important but not urgent. And uh, that's the domain you're talking about is working mm -hmm. on your business, not just in your business. So here you are now, just a few months later. And literally within two months, you tripled your purchase production. We haven't looked back since. When you got with us, you were doing just under a deal a month. Where are you at now? What's going on? What kind of volume are you doing? And what's your pipeline looking like? And give us an idea of uh, you know how things have changed since you landed here on Planet Prosper. Yeah, uh, right around three a month. Uh, right now, I actually have the biggest pipeline I've ever had since I've been in the industry. Um, and 75% of them are purchases. Um, nice. So that's not necessarily something that I've ex experienced um, previously in the industry. You know, 
purchases certainly come and go. Um, refis are something that's really kind of dependent on the rate. Um, or if someone has recently, or, or there's a few different scenarios that you can't necessarily control, but people are always buying and selling houses. So um, I feel like I am capitalizing on that part of the business so much more. Um, and being able to help realtors and my buyers be much more successful with tips from people that are much more successful, that are much smarter than me. I'm not, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, just glean from their experiences to really set those buyers offers apart and do things that nobody else in this area is doing in this industry. Um, now those realtors, it's not a deal. It's not half their deals. It's all of their business. Um, they have a question, they know to go to you. Um, they know you don't like working with a, a certain type of loan or new construction or or different things like that. Hey, who would I go to? So that, that trust, that value um, to be able to add to their business so they're not going to 30 open houses, they're going to five. Um, going over with your buyers like hey we're offering a plan like i'm giving you a plan of how we are going to sell your financing to this listing agent and this seller um and then the realtor is going to do the same thing for your purchase and sales agreement so you're not just throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks like you are going in with a plan and to see like the confidence or the understanding or kind of the light bulb go off for those clients that's been a, a big shift too but that's I think that's been the biggest part of why it's kind of exploded the way it has. I'm not having to go after and chase. Um, and then pipeline coming in through the marketing or different services and then being able to bless those realtors back with some business um, and have that actually be a two-way street and a two-way relationship. Um, it's just been a much more fun way to do the job. Yeah, imagine that leading with value, bringing massive, unique value versus begging, chasing, bribing, cold calling, and hoping they'll throw you a bone. Right? It's like yeah. it's a whole different world. But most people in this business would consider that kind of like the Loch Ness monster. You hear about it, you talk about it, but you never freaking see it. And it's like just this elusive butterfly that they never actually get in their hands. So how many, how many, you know, VIP partners, uh, have you brought on so far using our, our system and what are your, mm -hmm. your best partners sending you in terms of, uh, average um, number of deals per month now that you've had this smarter way of doing business? Uh, it's four right now. Um, and I'm getting, I'd say on average, probably like two and a half a month. Two and a half a month. month. Um, and not all of them are purchases like past clients like i'm training them how to look through their past clients for refinances and you know the hook for that is you're also saving them money on the current house they have so you're the one that introduced them to me for that when they go to buy or sell or get an investment property we're the team they're going to go to um so there's certainly been um a lot more through that as well that's amazing. Now to go from where you were doing two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a month in volume to three million uh, in such a short period of time is nothing short of outstanding. I mean, that's phenomenal growth to say the least. And I'm sure anyone listening, watching this, would concur. And for the average loan officer on a hundred hundred basis points, which is an average comp plan, that's thirty G's a month. I mean, that's surging money. That's nothing to sneeze at. So that is definitely a special kind of awesome. I'm just overjoyed and delighted and excited for you and for your family. And I know you were just scratching the surface of the surface, yet you ain't done. You've just begun, brother. What are you most excited about now? You're doing $3 million a month. You're continuing to grow and build momentum. You got more deals in the hopper in the pipeline than you ever have in your entire career in five years. What are you most excited about? What's the difference? What's the biggest difference that this program has made for you and your family and your life? And what are you most excited about for your future? I would say just kind of the the joy and freedom back into what I'm doing. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a little bit cliche, but if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. But that's it's added a lot of that back into why I got into it. So, I mean, I, I think that's the piece I've enjoyed the most. Um, you know, certainly not about the money, but you do not complain at all. Um, nor the wife, nor the wife. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> exactly. So, so that's been great as well. And then just a, a lot of different freedoms or luxuries, like 
not having to worry or have a, some different fears and anxieties. So, you know, getting to really just be a little bit more present in life. Um, you know, I think the, the biggest challenge or the, honestly, the hardest part of the system is, okay, now how do you manage your time? <laughs> because you have so many more clients. Um, and have. then, you know, different tools you guys provide for delegation or uh, getting some of those pieces off of your plate to then start getting more into the pipeline. I think that's kind of the the goal or what I'm looking forward to in the future is, you know, what does that look like? Um, what's kind of the the line of where it's like, okay, now we need to start getting some more people involved to do some data entry, um, free me up from a lot of that stuff. And then what does that look like? Or then what does that next scale for the business look like from there? Yeah, because obviously if you can triple your purchase volume in two months and go from 200 to you know half a million in volume a month to 3 million a month in such a short period of time, uh, you're just scratching the surface of the surface of what's possible. And there's no doubt in my mind, we can get you to 5 million, 10, 10 million a month as you continue to scale and build out a team and you know start delegating some of the minutia to a top talent team. So you can do what you do best and get the best to do all the rest. That's all next level leadership that's available to you. So we'll certainly be talking about that inside of uh, Seven Figure Lender Academy, uh, which is another program that we offer for the hyper committed who want to scale things to the next level of making massive impact, serving a lot more clients and having a whole lot more fun doing it. So, you know, we'll, we'll certainly be talking about that as next level gasoline for your fire, so to speak. But uh, for those that are watching and listening this, your chances are thinking, dang, that's some serious growth. I'd love me to get some of that. And you're on 100% commission, you eat what you kill with no safety net. And you're defiantly committed to adding at least hundred, uh, at least a hundred thousand dollars or more to your annual income while working smarter, not harder. And you're like James, you're at the point where he was before he got with us, sick and tired of being sick and tired of getting his butt kicked and spinning his wheels in the same spot. If that's you, and you're ready to step up your game, and you know you're called to more, you're capable of more, and you're ready to step into more abundance, more freedom, and create your best life for yourself and your family then I invite you to do exactly what James did just a few short months ago. And that is to book a complimentary breakthrough call where we'll lift up the hood on your business. We'll look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like inside of our program. If not, frankly, believe you me, we'll be the first people to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way though, my friends, our goal for you is that you'll leave that call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll even have some fun. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, go ahead and press the start button at the same place James did that unleashed an avalanche of awesome in his life. And that's to simply do a discovery call. We call it a breakthrough call. And let's just have an honest conversation. It's not a sales call. It's not a high pressure call because if we have to high pressure you to create a life of freedom and abundance, you're not ready for freedom and abundance. So this is not about a sales call or a pressure call. This is about a clarity call, a breakthrough call to identify and get clarity like never before on exactly what it's going to take to help you create a breakthrough and whether or not we can help. So if you guys are down for that, book the call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Now, James, before we uh, sign off today, for someone who's listening to this, watching this, you're like, yeah, it sounds interesting, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to get on a call yet. I don't know if I'm ready to you know, pull the trigger and, and uh, explore my options yet. What would you say to someone like that who's kind of sitting on the fence, a little bit like you were for a year there, just kind of spinning your wheels in the same spot? If you could speak to that version of you watching this right now, what would you say to them? Yeah, I mean, honestly, what I would say to them and what would I say to myself, right, to get involved a little bit sooner, um, you know, that that fear, that thing that's kind of holding you back, I mean, that's that's its own type of bondage that's, you know, going to keep it right where you're at. And, you know, definition of insanity is keep doing the same thing that you're doing and expecting a different result. So, um, you know, put that fear aside, like give Doran and his team a call, um, you know, be open, be honest about where you're at, where you want to get to. Um, have the tools they have the talent and you know if you can get out of your own way i mean that's getting out of your own way and putting that fear aside and kind of telling it where to go and that you know doesn't have a control over your business over your life over your abundance you know uh that's 
that's what this program can do for you. Amen, brother. And uh, obviously the reason why you're stepping up to making freedom money for your family, hero money for your family is because you're more committed to your dream than your comfort zone. And you're more committed to, you know, stepping into next level impact and next level uh, service than you were to coddling your comfort zone and playing safe and playing small. So I salute you for that, brother. I honor you for how you showed up in the program, coachable, committed, in it to win it. You know, obviously you're human, so you didn't do it perfect, but we don't seek perfection. We seek progress. So couldn't be more proud of you, man. Uh, just who you're becoming as a leader, who you're becoming as uh, an influencer for good, for impact. You know, I love your pastor's heart. I love your desire to serve. And, you know, that next level leadership is already making massive ripples, not just at home for your family, but also with your partners, with your clients. And we ain't done. We've just begun, brother. You're not even scratching the surface yet. So buckle up, brother. Seats in the upright position. We're not even in the jet stream yet, brother, but we're definitely making some massive progress. And so just, uh, yeah, just keep on keeping on, man. I, uh, I see greatness in you beyond uh you know what you've even seen right now you're a shining star and i have no doubt that you will absolutely be a shining star of influence a leader in this industry in a very very short period of time you just keep on keeping on but couldn't be more proud man awesome work well thank you for all the help and helping me get get out of my own way to get there Hey, my, my pleasure. And it's been a delight to see you step up your game and, you know, become who you're called to become a leader of impact. So love that. Well, guys, it's been uh, fun to share this inspirational story with you with the one and only James Patrick, how he tripled his purchase volume in just two months. And uh, if you guys would like to get more information on how he did it and how you can leverage the same system that sent him stratospheric to do likewise in your business. Again, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Well, James, thanks for hanging, brother. Appreciate you. All right, Doran. Appreciate you too. Talk to you soon. All right, guys. Thanks for rolling with us. Thanks for hanging with us. This is Doran Aldana with James Petrick on the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be coming at you with another awesome sauce episode very, very soon. Be blessed. And we will see all y'all on the other side on the next episode. Be blessed, y'all. Peace.